What's good, everyone? All right. I ain't going to do no introduction. I'm just going to get right at it. Callum Peck, Callum Peck, Callum Peck, Callum Peck. Why, 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 why? I swear, if, if, if ESPN was to give Caitlin Clark any credit for anything, it would be a new day. But again, they can't because you know why people like this. Now, Callum Peck, I ain't going to go in on you too much because you do have a good background from college, you know, coaching and whatever the case might be. But come on with the propaganda. You know what I'm saying? The propaganda is so blatant. Sabotage is so blatant. You know, you're watching these people on ESPN. They sit here. They, every time Angel Reese do something, they, they bigger up. You know what I'm saying? Then as soon as Caitlin Clark do something, they kind of try to like minimize it or move the goalposts or Angel Reese or <coughs> whatever the case may be. Now, you know, um, I guess what, Friday? Yeah, Friday night, she tied a double-double record. Saturday night, Saturday, Caitlin, first triple-double, first to 350 and on points and 150 assists. Two records in one day. Here you go. Today, Angel Reese broke the record. Double-double record. Okay, that's impressive. Whatever the case may be. But that does not warrant you to be in the category of rookie of the year and saying that, oh, and, um, Angel Reese is is us uh, is has an inch over her or is close or you know she's right there. What does Angel Reese does besides get rebound? If she wasn't getting rebound, what else would she be doing for her team? This is what you have to ask yourself a question. Okay, yeah, she had a couple of twenty point games here and there. Okay, whoop de do. Okay, she didn't have a thirty point game. Caitlin has two of them. You know what I'm saying? She done knocked 30, 20 points more than one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. You know what I'm saying? She would have had a triple-double in the Phoenix game the end of June. That would have gave her rookie of the month again. But no, she didn't get it because she has a coach that can't get out of, get out of her way. I have sit back and listened to a lot. And I try to keep it basketball sometimes, but shit, man, I ain't, I can't. You know, and shout out to Ben Daniels and the Pope B. Frank and Miss um, Andrea Wilson. They, um, um, I mean, Miss Adrian Ross, um, they all speak on this stuff a lot. And I try to keep it in between the lines, but shit just, it shit is just so blatant, man. You know, you got you trying to move the goalposts every so before I even get into it, I'm gonna just let you listen to what she had to say because it's just it's dumb. It's really dumb and idiotic how these ESPN personalities are. Cause they 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 sit there and try to try to keep Attaching Angel Reese to Caitlin Clark, no matter what Caitlin Clark does, she they try to attach Angel Reese to her all the time, and it's getting sick and getting pathetic. This is where we land. The Chicago Sky down at seventh place, Indiana Fever at eighth. So both of these teams would make the playoffs if they started today. And Carolyn, that brings us to a wonderful conversation and great <laughs> dialogue. Um, a big question. If you had to log your vote today, who would your rookie of the year be in the WNBA? I mean, it is a thin, thin line. It's it's really tight. But when you look at where the teams are, and I also went a little deeper and I looked at plus minus, and I also look at net rating. And when you look at that, Angel Reese has to get the nod. Now, I know it's not a popular, popular uh, position to take because – Angel Reese has to do the dirty work. I have said it's not sexy to have to battle and rebound inside and where you've got to do the blue-collar work. But this is a player that has come in as a rookie and is putting up grown woman numbers. 12 double-doubles in a row. 
I mean, in one season. So when you see a young woman come in like that and do that, I would have to give the nod with her efficiency rating and also the plus minus. All right. <laughs> you heard that BS. You hear, you hear that BS. So let me explain something to you, Miss Carolyn um, Peck. If you're using net rating and defensive rating or offensive rating or PER, right, please understand those stats. Those stats alone is only used for team, not for individual. You know what I'm saying? So why would you use that as a talking point for a blind argument when you know good and well it's about individual stats, individual um, records of what they have done and how much they impact the team? Okay, since you don't understand what impact the team means, let me show you. Right there, Caitlin Clark, 713, the most points scored or assists on, um, for her team. That's more than Sabrina. That's more than Enrique. That's more than Aja. You know what I'm saying? So you sit here and sit here and try to sell us the point about all oh, net rating or whatever the case might be. See, the net rating is a team stat. It's a team stat. So how can you attach a team stat to an individual? That's one. You know what I'm saying? Because if that's the case, Anthony Edwards wasn't even a rookie of the year over Lonzo Ball, and that's why he didn't get it. So when you talk about team versus individual, you got to look at it in the whole totality. The things that Angel Reese does for her team is not – as effective as it is that Caitlin does. Nobody gets picked up 94 feet. Nobody gets picked up 94 feet. She's the number one person being scouted on every team's list. Hell, she runs the offense. She assists the offense. She's rebounds. She steals. She blocks. She's a great um, help defensive person. The only thing is her one-on-one -on -one is getting is getting there. It's not there, but when teams run up and down the floor, Angel Reese is not running in transition like that. You could see her lobbying on the floor. So let's stop this, this propaganda. Because I do have another video that I'm probably gonna drop tonight, and it's gonna be pretty, pretty um pretty deep. Because I have sat back for the whole weekend and just watched this nonsense. I have watched content creators, you know, be on, you know, talk about injuries, talk trash about Caitlyn, talk about her skills and stuff like that. And these are the people that call themselves trying to know basketball or trying to know sports in general. And they don't. ESPN, I understand what you do because you push propaganda. You push it from... Stephen A. Smith, Monica Minut, um, the other um, the other girl on there. I don't even know her name. Can't pronounce her name. I ain't even gonna try. All of y'all, all of y'all on there that keeps doing the same thing, keep attaching Angel Reese to Caitlin Clark, and you can't. This rookie of the race is far. It's been over since the day Caitlin Clark walked through the door. But it's. It's a talking point for y'all because y'all have to continue to push that narrative. It's up to y'all to continue to push the narrative to get people to believe that. And see, <laughs> I watch Twitter. I'm on Twitter frequently. And it's crazy. All these Bulls fans, all these Bulls content cr creators, they sit there and, and take whatever ESPN says and run with it and say, oh, she's oh, Angel Reese is a rookie of the year. Oh, does this make her the rookie of the year? Man, please. Let me tell you something. Kayla Clark really could put it all to bed quickly. But she will because she goes about her business. She doesn't sit here and say, now, if you go look at it even further, let's look at these stats. Where was Angel Reese in the month of May when Caitlin was starting breaking records then? We didn't hear anything about rookie of the race, rookie of the year. Then, all of a sudden, we start hearing rookie of the year 
because in the month of June, that's when she started picking up a little bit because she wanted to win Rookie of the Month. That's what it was because Caitlyn won Rookie of the Month of May. And damn sure Caitlyn would have won Rookie of the Month again if she had got that triple-double again, like I said, against Phoenix. So let's not sit here and play like um, y'all really – Put y'all really doing something on y'all talk about stuff because we all see it, we all paying attention to it. For instance, this is a head to head matchup in May. This was May statistical in May. Angel Reese was only scoring 11 points at the time, she was only scoring eight rebounds, she wasn't even doing double doubles at the time. Caitlin was already scoring 17 points a game. She was already had five or six, five rebounds already. She was only three rebounds at that time under less than three, two and a half, three, three rebounds under Angel Reese at that time. She was already averaging six or six, almost seven to six, a seven to six a game during that time. And she already was daring steals evenly. They both field goal percentages was evenly. Turnovers, she her turnovers was high still at the same time. So you're going to sit here. And tell me, you gonna sit here and tell me that Angel Reese all of a sudden became this dominant player in the month of June when Caitlin numbers were still steady. This is the, this is their numbers right here for June, and this as at June June fifteenth at that time, their numbers still were similar. Her rebounds went up to about 10. Late, the late part of June, it went up to 11 at that time. Caitlin, you know, she had some bad games at that time. But look at her numbers, still steady, still averaging six assists, still under five rebounds a game, still 1.4 steals at that time. Field goal percentage just down a notch. Three-point field goal, boom. Free throws, boom. So you're going to tell me? You're going to tell me that Caitlin Clark numbers wasn't as good as Angel Reese from in June. And all of a sudden, Angel Reese became this dominant force that y'all y'all sit here and say, oh, well, ooh, you know, she she's coming on strong. She scored 27 points here, 25 points here. Who cares? <laughs> That's still the offense do not go through her. The offense do not stop with her. If you take Trinity Carter off her team right now, how dominant will Angel Reese be? You can't rely on her for points because she wasn't like that in college. She wasn't doing double-doubles in college. She wasn't doing doubles. Oh, and by the way, because she shoot two three-pointers on Friday, that makes her, like, her range is that good? Come on, man. What are we talking about? What are we talking about here? Y'all want to continue to make this argument for her, and it's never going nowhere. We all, we all see it. We all see it. Just like um, a lot of people sit there and try to make this argument for her. And, you know, ESPN, what they're going to do tomorrow, as always, they're going to start out, talk about her double-double record, and they try to go gloss over the fact that what Kate McClark did on Saturday is, is, is not good. But when we all know there ain't nobody, and I mean nobody, oh, I was in my rock voice for that minute, nobody, not three, not 997 rookies that ever came in the league recorded a double, a uh, triple double. Let's stop playing, man. Y'all, y'all want to keep on with that narrative? Go ahead. Because when it's all said and done and the smoke is clear and CC becomes rookie of the year, guess what's going to happen? Y'all going to be crying. Oh, matter of fact, just before I even end this, I heard somebody say that New York laid down for CC to get no rebounds in that triple double yesterday. Come on. Come on, man. New York got beat. They got tired because they couldn't run with us. 
they couldn't run with us. Now, I could say the same thing in the Minnesota game for the Sky because Nafisa Collar and them, they were even trying to get the rebound out of um, Angel Reese's hand. They was all just jumping straight up in the air. They wasn't even trying to get the ball from her. Same thing in the Seattle game Friday. They was doing the same thing. So I could go back and watch games. Oh, matter of fact, I could take it even farther back. The Atlanta game, a couple of nights before when they was playing, and t uh, Tina Charles doing wasn't even trying to get rebounds. They were sitting there let Angel Reese get all these rebounds. So let's keep playing these little stupid games because the thing about it, like Ben Daniels always say, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. But we're going to let y'all go ahead with all of that. We're going to let y'all have all of this little propaganda narratives, trying to sabotage CC, trying to make like her, like her game ain't translating to the NBA, I mean the WNBA, trying to make like Angel Reese is all above her. They, they want to keep Angel Reese attached to her so bad to where it's like, and you know what? Ever since Stephen A. said this, you see it more and more clearly. Stephen A. said, oh, Ride the meal ticket. Ride the meal ticket. Attach yourself, Angel Reese, to Caitlin Clark. So now she want to do every little thing. You even see the yesterday after Caitlin Clark, they put everybody show her love, posted up out over there. Guess what? The next thing you know, the Chicago Sky put out something for her. See, that's the that's the thing. Caitlin can't get her own shine by herself. It got to always be something attached to Angel Reese. Nobody did anything or put anything out on Angel Reese when she tied a record Friday night, right? Now, today, she she broke the record. Nobody going to mess with it. But I guarantee you, as, um, if Caitlin has a triple-double on Wednesday night, on Wednesday, rather, guess what's going to happen? Everybody's going to try to downplay it. But, again, stop the nonsense, man. Stop the nonsense. Y'all sitting here thinking we ain't watching this stuff. We see what y'all doing. ESPN, y'all known for propaganda. Y'all known for tearing people down. And it's so sad that you have these women on here. Can They can't even fix their mouth to say, hey, you know what? My pick is Caitlin Clark. If your pick is Angel Reese, then say it's Angel Reese. Well, it's close. Oh, what Angel Reese is doing? Oh, is this? Oh, you know, and then trying to say what Caitlin Clark is doing because nobody's guarding her. Man, please. Kellen Peck. I wish your name was Caroline, so I could do that um outcast song for you. But I expect what I expect from y'all. I don't take money from the nuts seriously. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't take Stephen A. Smith seriously. I damn sure don't take Shannon Sharp seriously. I don't take Molly seriously. I don't take Andrea Carter seriously. The only person that I take seriously is Rebecca Lobo. Re 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 Rebecca Lobo constantly comes out and talk about Caitlin Clark. Constantly. Y'all like ESPN? I can't take y'all seriously. Even lame-ass Skip Bayless, he's out here tweeting about Caitlin, but not in a positive way, in a negative way, because now he can't talk about LeBron James. He got to talk about Caitlin Clark. This is what y'all do in the media. But see, the real ones behind the scene and the content created um, world, we know what's up. So therefore, because we know y'all pay attention to us, we know y'all pay attention to our work and what we're talking about. Because if we didn't know what we're talking about, we wouldn't been doing this. That's why we pay attention. Because a lot of us have played sports, such as myself. A lot of us has watched sports, such as myself. A lot of us has an understanding of sports, such as myself and others. So when y'all sit here and try to push that propaganda, it's not, it don't build, it don't bowls well for y'all. But like I said, I do have a special video because 
it's very, very important that I get this out today because I, I, I'm kind of like fed up a, a lot, especially when it takes, it, it takes the character of a black man when they talk basketball and they like a certain player. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Until then, just a lot of wire sports media and I'm out.